Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're going to be looking at 5 different tips and tricks to help you with making your plush army good me. Specifically we are talking about this kind of plush yarn here, the chenille type yarns. We're talking about your parfait chunkies, we are talking about your honey bunnies by Hobie yarns, we're talking about your sweet snuggles, any type of that plush chenille yarn that looks so good with the Ami Gurumi plushies. If you're new here, my name is Zach, aka Crochet Me Zeddy. I have recently started my crochet career over on YouTube, but you can find me over on Instagram, TikTok, wherever there is a social media and I'll be there. I am a crochet content creator, pattern designer, and cute plushie maker. So please comment, like, subscribe, all that jazz, and let's get on with the video. So tip number one is about avoiding the gaps in your projects. So when you're looking at some of your projects like this, you can see that like right here that I have my stuffing showing through. And that is very common for a lot of people who make Ami Gurumi, um, especially beginners and whatnot. So what you want to do is when you're picking your yarn, you're choosing your chenille yarn, you'll see that on the back of the label or wherever you're buying it from, it will have something like this. A little indicator to indicate what hook size for crochet should be going with that yarn. If you're making Ami Gurumi with that yarn, you want to go maybe one to two sizes less than that. For Honey Bunny, I originally started using a 6mm hook and I have since dropped down to a 5.5 and that is because over time, when you're working with that yarn, you get a bit faster with it and your tension actually loosens up. So therefore you'll need to actually go down more hook sizes as you get better at it. But when you're first starting off, I would recommend finding one of those packs of like five packs of hooks um, and testing the different sizes for that yarn for you and your tension. When you're testing that, you'll be looking out for like those little gaps. If you still have those gaps as you're going, you'll need to keep dropping hook sizes until you have the right size. And that is specific to Ami Gurumi. If you're making something else with that kind of yarn, like, I don't know, a bag or a little hat or something, then the recommended hook size might work. But if you're making plush dolls and you don't want that stuffing to be seen, you need to drop the hook sizes. Tip number two is about picking the color of your yarn. I would recommend going for like a bright blue, a bright purple, or even a bright pink, something that is bright, easy to see, and therefore easy to work with. If you are just a beginner at using plush yarns, you want to go with more colorful yarns. So I would avoid using black, I would avoid using white, or anything that is very close, like a pale pink, because it can be very hard to see the stitches that you need to be inserting to for your project. For the next few tips, we're gonna jump over to my little phone cam, and we're gonna look at tightening your magic circle, avoiding that dreaded cone shape, and some tips and tricks around sewing these Ami Gurumis together and how to avoid that fraying. For this next tip, I'm going to make a magic circle and then show you the technique. Um, but you can make a magic circle any way you want. This is just my technique of making a magic circle, which I'll just quickly rush through now and then I'll show you the tip. So what you do is you grab your yarn and you twist it into a P shape and then you pinch the, the crossover of that P Wrap that yarn round, put it between your pinky and your ring finger. Put your hook through the little loop, that P loop. And then you just want to yarn over onto there and pull it back through that loop. Yarn over, pull back through. And then you want to go down and you'll see these two, this big loop here, which is that original P loop. And you want to take your hook, go back down through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the two loops. And there you'll have your first single crochet on your magic circle. So just do your normal magic circle way. That's just my way of doing it, but that's where I always end up. So once you have the magic circle, what you want to do is you actually will just want to put your hoop loosely on there and you're just going to pull it tight around the hook like so. Once it's on there, you want to pull it fairly tight. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to start working in through that magic circle. Make sure you have the tail of the magic circle looping over each stitch as well. So that's it, just gone through the hole, tightened up, loop that tail end over there, and then you just want to start doing your next six stitches. So you got one, you know, find that little gap. Two, three, four, 
five. So that's not including the first stitch that I already did. And you want to count your stitches, so I got one, two, three, four, five, and six. And there you go, you already have a Titan magic circle and you can just continue on with the rest. The next plush yarn army good me tip is about getting rid of that dreaded cone head that you'll find with a lot of your creations. Now there's actually a few different things that you can do here and I'm going to go through each one of those. The first one of these is actually upsizing your hook for that first round of magic circle and six stitches. So at the moment I'm using a 5.5 but what I could do is I could actually in those in that first round is I could use a 6mm hook or even a 6.5 and then from there on in continue on with my usual hook size. What that should do is just create a little bit of looser tension in those first few rounds or even that first round and keep it from actually bunching up like it is there at the start. Another technique is actually just to stretch the yarn. So I've seen people do this before where they will actually go in and they will actually pull on their creation and just pull around that magic circle area until it gets rid of it. Another option which I will not do right now but I will write up the instructions here um, for you to see is to actually alternate that first round. Now this will only work if you are doing um, something that gets up to 24 stitches. So with most ball shapes you'll start with something which is the first round is 6 stitches, the next one will end with 12 stitches, the next one will be 18 and then it'll be 24. With the alternative way you would actually start with 8, get to 16 and then to 24. So rather than doing those first four rounds, you'll be doing those first three rounds and then equating to the same amount of stitches that you can then continue on in the same pattern. The reason for doing that is it's just making a little bit looser up the top there um, and then keeping it at like a wider rate of increasing. Last but not least is the tip that I use the most and that's actually about your stuffing technique for when you are creating something that is a rounder shape. So what you want to do, rather than trying to like stuff out the top edges up here like most people will try to do, they'll end up with like a top heavy plushie. What you want to do, let me grab some stuffing. What you want to be doing when you're stuffing is you want to actually be pushing in. Once you, actually give me a moment just to fill this up. What you want to be doing is you want to be actually stuffing into this jawline part so when you're getting to the end of this rounder piece, rather than pushing and trying to get like this side here and pushing out here, try stuffing in around this jawline. I call it the jawline because it's literally the piece there on most of my plushies. What that's going to do is it's actually going to stretch the yarn out and it's going to pull it down from the top and stretch it around your piece and then bring that kind of stretch from that top and bring it round and create for a rounder shape. So that is my best tip is that when you're stuffing you want to make sure that you're stuffing in and underneath the jawline. This next tip is about being a bit more gentler with your yarn when you're sewing it together. What you'll notice that with this yarn after a little bit of sewing or if it's been used before and then undone on a project you'll notice that it starts like crumbling almost or fraying or something like that and that's just because of how it's been made in the factory. When you actually tighten this yarn a lot you'll see after a while when I start doing this tightening it and then almost like pulling on it in different ways you'll see the pieces starting to crumble and should start fraying. Ta -da! What you need to do when you are sewing your yarn is be a bit gentler with it. So that means don't like when you're pulling it out of the piece, don't pull too tight because you'll start loosening up these little fibers and then it'll start making these little parts here where it's bunched up and that's also to do with the friction. So I've got a piece here which I'm going to give you an example of. So when I'm sewing this little cow ear on, what I'm going to do to avoid the friction is I'm actually going to go into the piece and I'm going to go with the yarn. So it's going to create friction here in this stitch. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in the direction that the yarn should flow. I'm not going to pull this way because that's going to create more friction around that stitch. I'm going to pull in the way that it goes loosely through the piece. Ding! And I'm not going to pull it too tight. 
now that it's gone all the way essentially as it will go I can go back through my yarn and once again I'm going to go in the direction that the yarn will most easily go through once it gets to this part here where you're tightening up it's not too bad because that yarn's going to be used therefore you can just snugly tighten it in What you're trying to do is just avoid the friction as much as you can and just not pull your yarn tight. And then that's going to avoid any kind of mishaps you might have where the yarn will become looser or frayed or just damaged. So you just want to be more gentle with your yarn. So that was my top five plush army Yoromi tips. I hope you liked them. If you think there was anything that I didn't cover clearly enough, or if you had any other tips to add, please comment them below. I would love to hear them. If you enjoyed this content, please comment, like, subscribe, interact with the video, share it to your friends. And I will see you on the next adventures of Crochet Mizetti. So thank you for watching.